Now we'll look at the patristic soteriology. So the patristic period in church history is the first 500 to 600 years of the church. Pater means father in Latin. So patristic just means fathers of the fathers. And the fathers of the church are the earliest theologians and leaders of the church. And we use the word uh, patristic because they were mostly men. In the patristic period, there was no unified systematic soteriology. By systematic, I imply um, a system, right? So when you make a theological claim about one aspect of theology, you have to see how your claims or their assumptions affect other areas of faith and theology. In early Christianity, there wasn't always a concern to make sure everything fit neatly in the wider scheme of things. Okay. So today we talk about systematic theology, and that's where we try to pull everything together to make sure when you make a claim in one aspect of theology, it makes sense overall. And in the earliest um, theologies, they weren't always concerned about putting, bringing everything together. Now, the fathers developed a wide variety of themes and images, each of which contributed something to the overall picture of soteriology. A basic theme of patristic soteriology is an anti-dualist principle or anti-gnostic in orientation. So gnostic is, um, this is the word here, it's G-N-O-S-T-I-C and um, the G is silent. Now the, the Gnostics were people in the first 200 years of Christianity. Um, they saw Christianity as a mystery religion which had a secret only given to people who understood that matter, that's tangible stuff, was evil and non-existent, while spirit was sacred and really the only thing that existed. Okay, so the Gnostics were dualists. They believed there was spirit and matter, and that spirit was good, matter was evil. Now, traditional Christians fought against this view because the Incarnation was God's endorsement of matter and of this world and of life. So if you think about it, the fact that the Son of God, the second person of Trinity, chooses to become human is a, is a major endorsement for human existence, for humanity, and for this world. Okay, so Christians rejected this idea that the world was inherently evil. The question of salvation is often cast in terms of a struggle between good and evil, between God and the devil. This conception is always accompanied by an insistence that creation is good. So we're talking about patristic theology, um, soteriology here. While patristic soteriology speaks of conflict and opposition in the history of salvation, and even of God's triumph over hostile powers, it rejects any metaphysical dualism in which the world is seen as evil by nature. Okay, So you'll find this conflict in, pat in patristic soteriology between, say, God and um, evil, Okay, but um, in all of this, there's never the idea that, that the world is inherently evil. Okay, so salvation is salvation of the world, not escape from the world. Okay, so salvation is salvation of the world, not escape from the world. That means the idea is that the world is to be saved. That means everything that exists is to be saved, right? Not human beings somehow extracted and redeemed from an evil world.